In today's video, we're going to talk about how to use a scope and a signal generator to help you tune an HF antenna. This is a question that came from one of my YouTube subscribers, a ham radio operator. So while it's probably not the best way to tune your antenna, uh, it can be done, and uh, it's an interesting technique, so let's take a look at it. So the circuit is actually pretty simple. Uh, it really is just a form of a bridge. Uh, we have a signal generator that's putting out a signal to the top of this circuit here. And effectively it's, it's four you know, resistors, if you will, or three and then your antenna. So a pair of 50 ohm resistors here, and another 50 ohm resistor, and then your antenna. So the idea is that if the antenna is tuned to a 50 ohm impedance with no reactance, then this bridge effectively will be balanced and the voltage that appears here and the voltage that appears here will be identical. So we basically just use the scope to look at the voltages at these two points. Now in order to do that we just can't connect the scope up directly uh, because we, we don't want to affect the impedance of these two nodes dramatically. So I included a couple of 1k ohm resistors. The value here is not terribly important you just want this value to be relatively large compared to the impedance that you're trying to work with uh, and uh, not too large to create too much of a voltage divider effect um, so I chose 1k but as long as they match you know if they were 500 ohms, 800 ohms, you know 1000 ohms or whatever that would all work fine and then we're going to connect up to the scope with two pieces of coax here uh, and these two coax have to be of equal length so that we don't introduce any kind of a phase delay between the two. The scope has to terminate those transmission lines, those coax lines, into 50 ohms. So if your scope doesn't have a 50 ohm input termination, you'll need to use a pair of through terminators here. And then also the scope will have to be set to uh, the same vertical scale for channel 1 and channel 2, because often the delay or the phase between, you know, on the input channel will vary by uh, the input attenuator setting. So that's uh, what the setup looks like. And uh, let's go take a look at how I built it. Set the camera down here. So this is the circuit right here. All right. And uh, actually, you know, pretty simple. The RF signal comes in to this port here. And if we look carefully, this is a 50 ohm resistor here going down to this little pad, another 50 ohm resistor to ground. So that's our reference side if you will, okay, or we're just dividing 50 and 50. The other side's got a 50 ohm resistor to this connector. This will be the one that connects to the antenna. Uh, and those, So those are our two connections. Here is the 1k ohm resistor that goes to one uh, connector for the scope, and here's the other 1k resistor that goes to the other connector for the scope. Now you may also notice these other things down here at the bottom. And uh, what these are for is, let's say you don't have a scope that has 50 ohm input terminators or you don't have the through terminators to use uh, but you do have some 10x probes another way to do that is uh, use these very you know low inductance probe sockets that I handmade in the previous video that I, I just posted a few days ago shows how to make these and and this allows you to connect up these 10x probes directly to that circuit uh, and you could do that for a pair of them. Again, the probes have to match if you want to do it this way. And really, even to make this even better, you could put a resistor in series between this probe connection point and the two test nodes here. That would isolate the probe capacitance even more. But, um, but we're going to do it with a direct connection because we can. So I'll put the probe back over here. So what I've got wired into here now, uh, this is coming from my signal generator up to here. Um, the this point is going to channel 1 on the scope. Uh, this is going out to the antenna. I've actually got an antenna here uh, in the basement that is was nominally tuned to operate on 17 meters, but because it's in the basement it's a little bit mistuned. So we're going to tune it up using the tuner here and using the scope to kind of help us. So we're measuring the voltage across the antenna through that port. So let's kind of sit this thing back here in the vise so it doesn't move. Uh, I'll point out uh, on the scope, there's those uh, 50 ohm through terminators right there. Uh, so basically these are 
you know, they terminate the, tr the coax at 50 ohms and then they connect it directly to the scope so that the, the stub length if you will after that is pretty pretty small this particular scope doesn't have an option for 50 ohm terminations at the input uh, like some of the other scopes that I have but so I want to kind of show that so what we'll do um, actually right now I've got the antenna hooked directly to uh, this port and we're looking at the two voltages um, the voltage at the reference point and what I'm calling the reference point is this point right here so ideally this voltage and this voltage would kind of match uh, and we can see I, I've got two different traces in here so that means that the antenna is not presenting a 50 ohm uh, resistance a 50 ohm real impedance um, at this frequency I've got the signal generator back behind here set up for 18.130 uh, in the 17 meter band so that's what we're putting into this so just to kind of show an example let me pull the antenna off of here okay and I've got a 50 ohm terminator right here uh, if I stick if I stick the 50 ohm terminator on here actually let's uh, bring the scale down on here I can see these voltages are now different this is my reference waveform the yellow and then this is the voltage that appears at the test port and because that's an open circuit uh, I'm seeing essentially twice the voltage there and it's in phase if I put the 50 ohm terminator on here we can see that everything balances out and those two waveforms land right on top of each other so that's our goal is to make the antenna look like a 50 ohm resistor and so we'll pull that back off of here okay so what we'll do is take the antenna hook that into the tuner okay and take the wire from the, the tuner which is buried over here and we'll connect that up to our antenna port on the test circuit okay so now if we take a look at the scope uh, we can see there's a difference between those two waveforms and if I start playing around with the controls on the tuner I can see I can make those two waveforms kind of get close to each other and somewhat match if I move these things around you can actually see the phase shift between them that's uh, indicating whether we're getting inductive or capacitive um, and then um, can move this thing around. Let's see if I can get this thing tuned in. I had it pretty close before, but let's see. There we go. Really close. Get these dialed in just right. It's really touchy. And uh, there I got them really, really close right there. So at that point, I've made the two uh, signals kind of match up. So that tells me that's making this antenna look like a 50 ohm resistor. And uh, the way we can verify that is uh, well actually I do have an antenna analyzer here let's actually go take a look at that so I'll move the uh, camera over here to the antenna analyzer and if we turn that on we'll see the analyzer is set up uh, at uh, well, 134 megahertz uh, let's get back and dial that down here a little bit about 18.132 megahertz I'll take the antenna back out of my test circuit and hook it into the antenna analyzer here and we'll see that uh, showing SWR of 1.0, it's basically pretty flat. Uh, resistance of 51 ohms and a reactance of just 2 or 3 ohms. So uh, that showed us that uh, we were able to make this thing match uh, pretty well and did it kind of visually by looking at the, at the scope. So uh, I think the next part two of this video, uh, we'll take a look at how you can actually use this same circuit to kind of estimate the complex impedance of that antenna. Uh, so uh, it's more of a part two. If you're not interested in that, you can turn it off now. Uh, for those that are interested in that, stick around. And we'll continue and making a complex impedance measurement with this same circuit. Okay, part two, as uh, promised here, will show how to uh, take this same circuit and using the scope, try to measure what that complex impedance is of the antenna that we're trying to match with our matching circuit. You know, sometimes you might want to know what that impedance is and design a fixed matching circuit for it. So um, you know, the short answer is that we kind of can make that uh, impedance measurement, but there are it is going to be subject to some errors and some inaccuracy. Uh, but now let's talk about what those limitations are. So again, we're using the same circuit here. We've got our, our antenna connected up here. We're going to be measuring these two voltages and using that to calculate what the impedance is of the antenna. So let's take a look at uh, some of the sources of uh, you know, kind of inaccuracy, because uh, there will be a couple. 
Um, so there's going to be some just simply due to parasitics. You know, the inductance and capacitance of these components and things like that will kind of lead to some imbalances and, and that will uh, you know, give us some errors and those errors would get worse at higher frequencies. Uh, another source of error uh, or uncertainty is going to be a difficulty in getting a very precise phase measurement. Uh, most of these hobby, hobbyist level scopes that we've got on the bench you know, aren't going to give us a really precise phase measurement. All we're going to be able to do is measure phase by measuring the delay from one waveform to another and, uh, and then calculating out phase from that. So that's going to be subject to some error. Uh, another source of error is the fact that the relationship between this voltage and this impedance in this voltage divider is kind of nonlinear and relatively steep. And uh, what I mean by that is I've actually got it plotted here to kind of help us understand that. So if I've got a, a 50 ohm resistor and some unknown impedance here, uh, if we plot this unknown voltage, the Vx I'll call it, which is the voltage across this impedance, as a function of this impedance, uh, this is what the curve looks like. Let's say we put two volts in here. So obviously if, that, if we had an open circuit, we'd have uh, you know two volts appearing at this point. But uh, at, and if, if the impedance was exactly 50 ohms, all right, at 50 ohms, we'd have half that voltage. But uh, on either side of that, we kind of get this asymptotic relationship that goes between them. And you'll notice this scale here is logarithmic. So even a very small error in measuring voltage okay, well, can translate to a relatively large error on this logarithmic scale of the impedance. So that's certainly going to limit our ability to measure the impedance very precisely. This is probably one of the biggest sources of error uh, or, or, you know, in, in terms of our uncertainty in the measurement. So anyway, all that being said, you know, plus we could also have some cable and other mismatches and things like that. So all of the, that would contribute to some other errors as well. So there's other little sources, but just to give you an idea, you know, if we get within 10 or 20 percent, we're doing really well in terms of measuring that impedance, I think. So, so here's how we do it. So the simple voltage relationship, voltage divider relationship is this. Everybody kind of knows that. But since we're going to know and measure this voltage and we're going to measure this voltage, what we're trying to solve for is the unknown impedance. So rearranging this equation for that, we get this equation here. Okay, so the unknown impedance is 50 times our measured uh, voltage divided by the difference uh, of the input minus the measured. Now it looks really simple, but it turns to be turns out to be a little more complex than that because the measured voltage is a complex number. It's got an amplitude and a phase, and we have to account for that in order to calculate the complex impedance, which is going to have a magnitude and a phase, or a real or imaginary part or a resistance and a reactance, another way to look at it. So I'd set up the, uh, the measurement here, you know, previously, and uh, I'm showing, for example, how I was making the phase measurement just by measuring the delay using some cursors. And uh, so in this case, I measured uh, cursors about a two nanosecond delay, and I measured the, uh, the voltages of channel one and channel two. Remember, channel one is measuring the voltage at uh, at this point here. So my input voltage is exactly going to be twice that and it's going to be in phase with that because that's just a resistive path. So that's easy. I, if I measure this, I know that voltage just by multiplying by 2. And then I'm measuring the voltage at that point as Vx. Okay, so that's so, and that's channel 2 here. That's the blue one. So I'm measuring the phase between them and I'm measuring the amplitude of them. So I made those measurements earlier and uh, so let's actually go and look at that uh, sample calculation. Uh, so that's right here. Okay, so my, in this case I did 18.130 megahertz, and uh, so I measured the reference voltage of 32 millivolts, so it was 64 millivolts would be my input voltage, and that's my reference, so I'm going to call that phase shift zero. I measured the uh, voltage on my antenna, uh, the antenna port I should say, at uh, 27.8 uh, millivolts, and a delay of 2 nanoseconds. I can convert that delay into degrees by essentially taking 2 nanoseconds divided by the period of the signal, which is the same thing as multiplying by the frequency. So 2 nanoseconds times 18.130 multiplied by 360 degrees gives me 13 degrees. So that was the phase shift. So that Vx is 27.8 millivolts with a 13 degree phase shift. And that's positive, so that tells me it was an inductive load. 
I can convert that to the rectangular form here as well. Um, again, this is probably a subject for another video, but for those of you that are familiar with working with complex numbers, there's the, uh, uh, the rectangular form and the polar form of that same voltage. So we plug those into the equation here. We'll leave the polar form up top. I'll use the rectangular form at the bottom because that makes it easy to add and subtract numbers. Uh, so we basically run through the calculation here and we wind up with a imp complex impedance of 37 ohms, 37.1 ohms with a phase shift of 22.6. It's a positive 22.6 which tells me it's moderately inductive. And then if we convert that to the rectangular form, okay, we have 34.2 ohms with 14.26 uh, ohms of inductive reactants. So that's the imp complex impedance of the antenna as viewed at that port right here. Let's go verify that. I've actually got a uh, antenna analyzer here. We can actually go measure that directly. So let's turn the analyzer on. I'll take the antenna off of my circuit and let's hook it directly into the analyzer. It's running at about the same frequency, 18.13 uh, megahertz. And if we take a look, I'm getting an impedance of 31 ohms with a, a complex component or an imaginary component of 17. All right. Now that's uh, reasonably close to what we measured, right, or what we calculated. We calculated out 34.2 and 14.26, and we're showing 31 and 17. That's uh, about as close as you could ho hope to come, I would think, uh, measuring uh, things in this way. But it does show you you do have a way of kind of getting there. And uh, you know, if you're designing an antenna system, it might be important for you to understand what the complex impedance is, because that might help you des to design a matching network to match the output impedance of your transmitter to the, uh, to the antenna to get maximum power transfer. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, you know, there's part two here. And uh, thanks again for watching, and see you next time.